Hey everybody, still here. So we are doing a repaint on a 1963 Cadillac DeVille convertible. Uh, nice car, except uh, whoever did the body and paint shop, paint job should have been beating about the head and neck. Uh, they shouldn't be doing body work. So uh, we are going to straighten it out and repaint it. Um, we're going to try to save the owner some money on this car. It's uh, valuable, but it's not like, you know, super valuable. And, and hope, uh, uh, it seems like they did a pretty good job, at least in applying the filler and applying the primer and applying the paint. Um, for those jobs that the, uh, they didn't do good prep work, then you just can't do this kind of work on them. Sorry. So I'm going to show you what to look for in, if, in your uh, project maybe you're going to do. Um, this is a good kind of, kind of job for a car that has been repainted. If it's an original paint job, no. Um, but this is a good way to get rid of a lot of extra paint on the car, get rid of extra filler maybe on there, and then take care of some waves in the process. Um, the hood and deck lid we did with a 150 uh, on a long block, uh, wet. And it take, if you take your time and you get all the stuff off that you can and then fix the issues you come across when you see them, uh, when you prime it, all you gotta do is final sand it and then paint it, you know? So other way of doing it would be to strip it to bare metal, okay? Redoing all the bodywork, okay? Reblocking it and then priming it and then sanding it and then painting it. And this cuts out two steps by doing it this way. Um, yeah, there's gonna be some other paint underneath there, but not very much. So uh, another way of doing it is sandblasting it. And for those of you that sandblast hood and deck, hoods and deck lids, you're fucking stupid for all I care, all right? Don't do it. You're nothing to do it, but you're going to ruin a hood and trunk lid. Don't sandblast hoods and trunk lids or the inside of roofs or the tops of the roofs if you can help it, okay? Most people can't sandblast that stuff without screwing it up. So what we do is we either paint strip it, which you can't do anymore because in California they don't make paint stripper anymore. It's worth the shit. But they do have sandpaper, and lots of it. So, you know, going through lots of sandpaper to strip things down to bare metal. It's just the way of the world, okay? Or we do it this way, which we take off most of it and we block it out while we're sanding it off. But you have to take your time and you gotta take, you gotta know how you're gonna do, how you're blocking things out. You gotta know the basics of how to block a panel. You got little curved areas, you got little round areas. There's all, area area has a different way to be worked. I'm not gonna go into that with this video. I'm just tell you how we're gonna basically do the car for as far as blocking off the paint. Hopefully you have a technique to do the blocking, okay? You know the materials to use, you know the, the sandpapers to use, or you know the, at least the, uh, the tools to use to block the car out. Um, there, real quick, there's these, all these new blocks out, all these plastic twisty blocks and these Dura blocks. You can take them all and throw them in the ocean. They're useless to me, okay? I'm old school, I use aluminum, you know, with a rubber pad on it, with a wooden handle, you know, nice hard, nice and flat, <laughs> that's what I do it. You have the rounded areas, we use pads, and we have little blocks for doing those other areas, but for the basic part of a flat car, you want a hard 18 inch block, okay? Like I said, the hood and deck lid we did with 220, I'm sorry, 150, chased it with 220. The car we're doing with 80, we're chasing a 150. So, those parts, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just wet set and paint them. We'll be ready to go, okay? I'll show you those in a minute here. The car, we're going to go ahead and we're going to end up reblocking it one more time with 150 afterwards to make sure we got it flat and straight, okay? But, to get the car down and get all the excess material off it, we're going to use 80, okay, and a little bit of 150 to kind of chase it off here and there. We're going to knock the paint off all the edges, okay? So, there won't be any paint on any of the edges. That's where your problems will come up, okay? If you don't take the paint off your edges, you're always gonna have a chip problem every single time. So take the paint as much as you can all the way off of the edges of the stuff. Where the, you have like a come together here, you wanna take all the paint off those edges as well as the turnarounds on, on the front and rear and on the engine compartment areas, all those areas, okay? The jams, okay? We're gonna hit the jams with some 80, okay? We're gonna take as much of the red off we can and we're gonna make it down, make it smooth, okay? You'd be surprised, this thing's gonna come out super nice. So, anyway, let me turn this around so I can show you the hood and trunk lid, and then I'll show you the car, and then we're gonna move along. I'm gonna show you this from start to finish. Painted, 
polished. Okay, you're gonna see this thing's gonna look bitching when it's done. All right. All right, so there's the hood and trunk lid. So, that's what it looks like when you take off as much of the paint as you can, all right? Of course, the red areas were a little bit of lower areas than the rest of the areas. You can't, you're never gonna, you're not gonna see those low areas when it's all done, because it's all been blocked out, okay? We're gonna prime it, and we're gonna block, and we're gonna uh, go back, and we're gonna hit with 220 on a, on a, I use a, we use a paint paddle, and we're gonna use that to flatten and make sure everything's good to go, and then we'll soft pad it. When this car is gonna be solid color, so we're gonna hit it with 320. Then when I hit, after I get done with it, before I paint it, I'm gonna use House of Color Red Sealer, because the car's getting painted red again. I use House of Color Red Sealer, so the car's already red before I paint it. Okay, there's a hood over there, all right? As you can see, the bottom areas and the bottom, we didn't go crazy with them because uh, they're, well, the big, the main problem when this car is getting repainted was the clear took a, took a crap, went bad. Um, real quick, let's touch on that, okay? Clear. If you can, if you're painting a car and you're clearing stuff, we're, this car we're gonna do base clear because the customer wanted it. Normally, I don't base clear on solid colors. Um, I use a PPG uh, shop line single stage for most of the solid cars I do, but uh, some people like the clear look, and, and so does this guy. So whatever we're gonna, we're, whatever he asks for. But when I buy clear, I buy good clear. I get the best clear I can buy. The best clear I can buy that I've found so far is PPG um, Vibrance. Description in the bottom. Anyway. Good clear, it's worth it. An extra couple hundred bucks and you spent all the money on time, buy good clear. Don't try to save yourself 100 bucks, 50 bucks on a gallon of clear. It's not, not worth it. All right, so here's the front fender. Uh, Jose started on this today. He's got it blocked down to where there's really like no paint in the top of it hardly or any red paint left on it, okay? And you can see the sides. He's already starting to hit metal here and there, okay? So when the metal, when he starts, when he hits metal, that's where he's gonna stop at. So we've got a little more to go to the back there. We've got, to, we've got to get the edge fixed so he can get off the back of the fender. And then uh, we're going to line up, do the gaps. The, gap, the car's already been gapped, but we're going to make sure of it. Take all the edges off it. He's starting the door a little bit. Um, there's rest at the bottom i got to fix yet, so he hasn't really gone that far. But anyway, that's kind of what it looks like when you start. When you take it with the 80 on a block. This is the block I'm talking about. Okay? Hard school. No bendy. Nice and flat and hard. Just like you know what, 80 grit, okay? And uh, then we're, like I said, we're gonna chase it with a little bit of 150 if we have a little room to do it in. And then we'll prime it. I'll put three coats of uh, epoxy primer on it and then we'll block it out with some 150 and prime it again and paint it. So it's long and flat. So we use long, flat block, okay? Um, we're gonna take the cowl off it and uh, do the details in the back and then Start doing the door jams. Door jams, we'll do, like I said, the same thing with AD grit. So, um, anyways, this is where we're at so far. Uh, I'll just give you guys updates as we go. And um, you'll see when it's done, it's going to look pretty. It's going to be a nice car. Nice and shiny red. All right, bye now. Okay, so what determines whether you can do a car like this or not is how the paint feather edges. You see how it's sanding back and it's not peeling back? It's like primer it's like red it turns itself on almost like primer where you can sand through it and it's not peeling leaving it's not leaving hard weird edges okay if you're sanding and your paint is peeling back off the primer and it didn't adhere like it should have okay it isn't going to work you cannot do this kind of this kind of job okay or how i'm describing it because what's going to happen is you're going to have a, a ring around here okay where the paint peeled back okay and it's going to shrink back around here at, and over time and you have all these little rings all over the car isn't going to work only if the car is is feather edging and this paint is feather edging really really well okay sometimes you get a car that some areas won't feather edge but other areas were like it was repaired terribly maybe in one area so you just have to strip that 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 on this case red off of it until you get down to the primer but on this car it is really feather edging nice so we're able to do this kind of work okay um so the the, the red paint becomes basically primer it's the way it would be. You're gonna have this much material in the car anyways. This is what it's gonna end up with. Um, if you would say you strip the car to bare metal and you primered it, you're gonna end up with basically the same way, same place. Primer, where there's filler is gonna be filler. There's no cracking on this car anywhere. 
So if there was cracking and a lot of those kind of things, no, that wouldn't work either. You got to get that bad filler out and redo whatever they screwed up at, okay? But this car, the filler they did was pretty decent, apparently. There's no cracking or, or problems. And uh, all we're going to do is take care of blocking off the excess, the excess um, paint. And then, uh, but the quarter panels, I mean, are horrendous. So they're going to take a little bit of filler. But up here, no, it's not that bad. Doors maybe a little bit too. You'll see when we get to them, okay? Anyway, so this is the car, and this is what you can do if you have paint that feathers. If it's not feather edging, then uh, no, you're out of luck. Sorry. All right, bye now. All right, guys, so uh, there's the car. The flat area is all blocked out. You got some detail to do on the fins yet and on below the body line and the bottom down there, but uh, the visual area is pretty much blocked down. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up about two coats, three coats of primer on this thing so we can do a block on that. Even though it's pretty well flat, uh, a lot of times when you have dissimilar materials like filler and primer and paint, you get a little high and low spots, but I think I'm gonna put, like I said, some primer on it so the guys can block out the side real quick to make it extra flat. And then uh, uh, next couple of days, they'll work the thin area, the area around the trunk. And then um, there's some rust in the bottom area I gotta take care of yet before they can finish off the, uh, the low areas. The other side, watch out for my bass thing on. The other side is come along and uh but it's got a ways to go yet uh ralphie's working on the um the door jams he's going after them with some 150 and take off a lot of the materials so we don't have a whole bunch of extra paint in there and that quarter hasn't been touched yet so uh anyway that's where we're at i've been welding up all the trim holes on the side here right there and uh but i haven't done the sides yet the other side's been done and um there's the cal cal vent it's all been done Putting trunk litter done. So anyway, I'm gonna prime this out, and then um, we're gonna block it one time. Then I'll prime it for for uh, final sanding, and then we'll um, be ready for paint. All right, here we go. There it is, all masked. And I'm gonna shoot the center section, and then uh, a couple days later we'll block it out. All right. So red primer. Uh, Epoxy primer, by the way, I got from the store. My first time using it. There it is, right there. Sprays like clap. You can see how straight the car's coming out. However, looks pretty decent. Um, it's uh, pretty see-through. You can still see some blotchy areas, and I got three heavy coats on it. So um, I don't know. I'm not real happy. <clears throat> the idea was to go ahead and primer it red and then block it all out do the final sanding, blah, 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 with the red primer, and then the car RB red before we paint it red. But I think that's kind of a um, fantasy. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen because, I mean, you can really see through it, especially here in the back. Let me walk down here. Yeah, it's really hard to see on the camera, but you can see some dark areas, especially with your reflection against the trash over here. But yeah, you can see it there. See the, the blotchiness? So anyway, I don't uh, think this is going to be a thing for the future. I bought a gallon of it, so I'm going to actually finish the car in it. We'll see how it goes the rest of the way. I, um, but I don't see it working out. Um, normally what I do is I'll paint a car. I'll, I'll do the car in the... Uh, I see a little wave. Anyway, I, I'll paint a car with... We use gray, gray or white primer. And then um, I'll seal it with a color that's close to the car. I use House of Color... Um, tinted clear or tinted i'm sorry tinted primer they make red blue yellow black and white and i use the red and the blue and the yellow a lot um the red will cover in one coat and this is three coats it still hasn't covered so i was trying to cut that step out because the house of color pr uh, primer is now like 
hundred dollars a quart. So it's pretty ridiculously expensive. But anyway, um, anyway, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's not going to work out probably. I'm going to go ahead and finish, like I said, finish the gallon out, and then um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, apparently, this stuff doesn't sand that great either. But I was willing to sacrifice that. Oh, it's, Jesus, it's still sticky. I was, um, it's been like an hour. Um, I was willing to sacrifice the sanding for the uh, the color holdout. But uh, if we're going to have, you know, more than one problem, it doesn't make sense. So, anywho, um, there it is. The, the flat areas on the side I wanted to make sure were flat. We primered those to block out uh, with some 150. Uh, come Tuesday, we have a hurricane supposedly coming in in California. I don't know what the hell. Anyways, uh, so after that passes by, we're going to uh, get back on this thing. But for now, I'm going to stash it in the under the cover and uh, and get ready for our upcoming hurricane. Bye now. All right, so here's the car all blocked out. But I got ahead of myself and primer this fender already. But you can see that's the red primer. Uh, it actually worked pretty good, you know, it's a little transparent, but we uh, added some more, I got some more um, pigment for it, so next time around it's going to be a lot better. You can see that's one coat right there. Looks pretty good. So the whole car is all blocked out. This is actually red primer here. That's the red paint originally. We took a little, most of the paint off of it, as you can see. All right, so basically using the paint as primer. Okay, here's the back of it. There's that, so it's gonna be flat and nice. Um, so this over here, this side, this quarter panel needed some uh, skin on it, so we had to just skin cut the side of it. And it's all at 150 right now, so we're gonna prime it and then uh, 220 and 320 wet. 220 block it with a stick probably and then 320 wet with a soft pad and uh, and then um, paint it. So there's the fender, got most of You see how lumpy it is. See, all the red spots are the, are the low spots and the primer spots are the high spots. So you can see what's left, pretty messy. Um, we gotta do the rocker panels yet. I'm gonna put on the lift to take care of that, but all the high areas are done. Hood and trunk lid are, ready to, are pretty much ready to paint and take care of those probably first. Because the car is so big, I don't have much room in my, boot, in my booth for the whole car and hood and trunk lid. So I'll do those separately. So anyway, the door is off. We got a new door, new door for it. Jose is over there taking care of the door right now. So anyway, so this is what it looks like before I prime it. Bye. All right, there it is, all prime. That's that uh, performance primer from um, PPG. Works pretty good, it sprays nice. Um, sands good so so far so good it's epoxy primer so epoxy primer DTM um, the only problem is it has no UV protection so you can't leave the car outside in the sun it's just gonna fade and turn pink so it's just for basically you know when you paint a car red I'm gonna do the car in red I'm gonna get I can get green blue whatever and uh, and then uh, I just like using the color primer that we're gonna do the car in. look at the chip or anything it's already it's not gonna be white or black or whatever underneath the the, um, you know, the primers are showing through. So anyway, uh, we're gonna get the Buick over here. I get the Buick on the lift, doing the final little bit of wiring and brake stuff on it. Um, I'll get that off the lift, then we're gonna do some uh, repairs on the rockers, this thing, get it done, and get in the paint booth. So anyway, uh, till next time. The hood and truck have been guy coated with green. And uh, Ralphie's doing the initial sanding with 220 on a stick. Then we'll come back with 320 on a soft pad and finish it up from there. All right, so there's the hood and deck lid all ready to paint. Um, Ralphie took care of it with a 220 block with a stick at least. And then um, soft pad with 320. It's going to be a solid red. You can see here in a minute. I'm getting ready to spray it right now. Um, these parts were primered before the rest of the car was. That's why they're bright white. Um, we use light white primer on white cars. And we use it, we, whatever color we're painting. We try to match that to the primer we're using. So anyway, uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and seal these with some red House of Color sealer, and um, then we're going to paint them red and they're going to clear it. So anyway, uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Now. 
Here we go. All right, there it is, they're red. Now it's to get painted uh, Russo red, Ferrari red, after they dry. Give them like a half hour to go, kick it, and then we're gonna come in here and spray that. In the meantime, here is the primer, or the sealer. This is House of Color, KD 304, 3004. Uh, they have it in uh, red, blue, yellow, uh, what else is there, red, blue, yellow, white, black. White and black, I wouldn't buy, it's just buy a primer. I just use it for sealer, but the red, the blue, and the yellow I use a lot of. The yellow is outstanding. If you're doing yellow and you and you uh, base it with the yellow, you're good to go, man. That stuff just covers really good. Yellow, if you if you paint yellow, yellow is a base to cover. So and it always comes out looking green if you don't paint it white or paint it yellow first. So in the red, okay, since most reds are transparent, blues, greens. You know, you got, if you get it already red when you, before you paint it, it's flawless paint, you're painting on the car, okay? So it makes it much easier. Besides, it comes out nicer. And it also, it kills another grade of paper. So, you know, this is the sound. So, if you're going to paint a base clear car, you're normally going to go down to 400, maybe even 600. Those who go to 800, you're stupid. There's just no sense of going to 800. There's just no reason. It has to have something to bite to. 600 for me is even overdoing it. But if you seal it at 320, I've never, ever had a scratch. I just did a Porsche recently, a silver Porsche. We did it at 320. I sealed it. We painted it bright silver. It's pretty fine Porsche silver, you know, and there was no scratches anywhere, none of that stuff. So it's a waste of time to go down below that. And so it's just a stroke to go ahead and seal it anyway. It's just seal it and be done with it. Um, uh, it's nice because it's DTM, so if you have any sand throughs, you get that stuff, you know, knocked out, taken care of all in one spot. You don't have to have a dry spot. You have to go back and sand that afterwards. So anyway, um, if you, if the, Basically, the colors that comes that it comes in are the primaries, you know, blue, yellow, red. So from there, if you want green, you blue, blue and yellow, and that green. Okay, you want purple, you mix the red and the blue, and you get another purple color. So you need to uh, you get the primaries and you mix and adjust it from there. If I'm doing a maroon car, I'll just add a little black to it and darken up the red, and it works really well. Um, if I want a little lighter, you know, like a pinkish color, then I just put you know a little white in the red. So I always keep it on hand. I have always have a quart of new court plus i have a court that's already been open because i use so much of it we paint a lot of cars and uh having that stuff on hand makes a big difference um we're going to do that uh impala pretty soon same on same on. i'm going to seal this thing with red and then i'm going to you know paint it's going to be the same color as cadillac along the same guy he's that red is his red so we paint all of his cars red that that uh, ferrari red color um what else is there so like I said, there that we did the hood and the trunk lid early because the car is so big. You know, it's 20 foot of Cadillac. I can get everything in here, but I just hate tripping over everything. It's a solid color anyway, so no big deal. Uh, that way I get them out of the way, and then uh, I'll just concentrate on the body and maybe the skirts or whatever small shit we have to take care of at that point. Um, today's Sunday. Uh, I like to get ahead on things to next week uh, if we're not doing any, you know, family crap, which 
out of the wall anymore. All right, for every uh, paint job in between sealer and paint, you need to tack it. I double tack. I use an old one and a new one, or a newish one. And I go over them twice, make sure I get all the residue off. You don't want to leave any dust on this thing, okay? So you can see they're all red now, but they're a little bit transparent. That's just the way it's going to be unless you put two coats on. But it's way better than being white, trust me, because you'd be putting two coats of paint on there to just get kind of red, okay? It's already red. Now I'm going to paint it, paint it and, uh, and clear it. So um, that sealer is probably, I want to say, 90 bucks a quart. But things are going up so fast, I don't even know. But it's way worth the money at the end of the day. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to go shoot some, uh, some uh, base on it. You know, base depends on how it's covering. So if it covers really good, first coat I go on and I can't see anything through it, I'm going to put one more on I'm pretty good to go. Sometimes three coats, sometimes four coats. Depends on how it's covering. It doesn't. You don't really need to put a whole lot of base on. Just what it takes to get the, the part covered, and as long as you feel confident that it's not um, going to be having see-through spots or any light spots, then you're good to go. So uh, it's really a matter of judgment to the painter how much paint you're going to put on. Um, I'm using um, PPG uh, Shopline uh, solvent base coat. It's Supposedly mixed uh, one to one. I mix it one to uh, a half, so it's you know thicker. But I mean one to one is it lays down a little better. But other than that, it's just more coats, more paint, more overspray, and more paint you waste, and blah blah blah. So this works much nicer for me. Um, paint gun is kind of a pos, but uh, it's not really the paint gun. It's, it's the artist, right? So here we go.
All right, there's four coats, uh, three and three quarter. Um, uh, and, and a sealer coat to make it red. So imagine if I didn't seal it red, I'd be having to put at least two more coats on it. And, uh, you know, paint's much more expensive than, than a sealer is. And a sealer also has the added benefit of filling in sand scratches and, you know, it's much more, you know, not near as transparent as top coat paint. So now I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit, let it gas out, and I'm going to come back with uh, uh, clear and clear it. Um, the fourth coat was really just kind of an insurance deal. So I knew there was a couple of spots that were dark before, so I went ahead and just went ahead and coated them next to one more time, make sure what, they weren't gonna pop through in the sunlight. So any through anyway, they're, uh, it's good to go. Three would have been good, but the, the fourth coat and the other areas made it you know, less insurance. So now we're gonna do some mix up the Vibrance Clear Get that set. Um, what else? Um, my first coat I usually put on pretty heavy, so uh, it'll lay down pretty good. And I don't know, I just do that. That's why my um, bad habit. But and then I, you know, I get real close to the thing and hose it on. And after that, I pretty much apply it the way I would spray pretty much anything else. Um, I don't have the best technique. Okay, I've been spraying for I don't know what. 35 years or more, and uh, everything comes out pretty good. I never had a problem with what I sprayed. I have so I had some light spots now and again, but because my booth isn't the best in the world, but it gets the job done. Um, I don't have the fans on today because uh, uh, it's 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 hotter than shit. The last other problem right now I'm having is that I only had a medium reducer. I didn't have any slow reducer, so it would have made a big difference if I had a slow reducer. So I had what I had, so I had to deal with it. So. Um, Anyway, next step is clear. Bye now. Hey everybody, so still here. We're getting ready to shoot this Cadillac. Uh, all the body work's done. We did the uh, uh, final sanding with this red primer we picked up. Uh, worked out pretty good. I was kind of happy with it. Actually, I'm very happy with it. So in the future, for other color type cars, we'll probably be using it for blues, greens, and reds because those are transparent. Usually when we buy them, the color is. And it helps when the car's already like already halfway there when you go to paint it. So. Anywho, we uh, had some sand throughs. I went around it with some red House of Color sealer, which is a little brighter than the color that's on it, but it doesn't really matter. It'll still hide when we get it red. So um, anyway, I'm gonna turn this around to take a look at it and see where we're at before I paint it. So there it is. You can see it's uh, got the, the brighter red areas where there was some sand through. So I went ahead and went over with some House of Color red sealer to, uh, you know, bury any sand throughs. Uh, the door is off because uh, they replaced the door actually the bottom of it was basically missing so we got a better door um there's a the back of it i missed a little spot right there anywho um so uh yeah car's nice and straight should really bitching when it's done it's a 63 cadillac eldorado brits convertible blah 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 so anyway uh yeah we're gonna shoot some color on it and uh and then uh, clear it, and we'll see it outside and shine it, and it'll be nice and shiny and flat. So, uh, see you on the other side. Bye now. Hey, gang. So, uh, got this thing painted last night. Uh, the wind came up, got a little dust in it, but uh, we're going to get it sanded out here in a minute here. So, uh, I'm going to turn this around a second so you can see it. It's all shiny now. See my shoulder? So, um, I'll show you the materials we use here in a minute. But, uh, basically, we uh, got it painted last night about 9 o'clock, finished up. Um, 
Normally at night, it's kind of a battle with the bugs and me, but uh, for some reason, they don't clear for red. I don't know why. But I uh, didn't get any bugs in it. Nice. So uh, anyway, so I'm going to show you the next step, which is color sanding. How I color sand it. So everybody's got their own little way they're doing it. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Like, uh, what, almost 40 years now. So I have my little system. It works for me. It may not work for you. It may not work for the next guy. But I'll show you how I do it. Uh, it seems to come out pretty nice, and every car come, that leaves here looks pretty much glassy, so, and it lasts. So, uh, anyway, let me turn this around so I can show you where we're starting at. All right, Ferrari Russo Red. That is 63 Cadillac Eldorado Brits. Um, I put, uh, the course, the thing was sealed in red like you saw. I put uh, two coats of red um, base coat on it, and then... Decided to go ahead and since I had plenty of paint left over to put it in, put a third, even though I really didn't need it. But uh, anyway, it came out pretty sweet, um, pretty straight as you can see on the side there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I color sand and the materials I use, so that maybe you, if you want to try it, and you can. Um, it's got four coats of um, Vibrance Clear, uh, PPG Vibrance Clear on it. Um, Everybody sprays differently. Um, there's uh, sprayers and there's painters, and I'm a painter. I hose it on. Uh, um, painters don't usually put it on like I do. I put it on really, uh, just ready to run, just about ready to run. So it's got a lot of paint. I put it on as heavy as I possibly can. Um, and by doing that, though, I, I leave a little bit of orange peel on it, not like when you're spraying it, it lays down a little better. But uh, like I said, I hose the shit out of it. So it's got a lot of paint on it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna show you what we do on the tools we use and we'll uh, start sanding this thing so I can show you my technique. Alrighty then. So what we have here is, I'm gonna color sand this fender, right? So starts off with, uh, I do with 800. I use 800 water dry. Good old 3M, okay. I get the uh, 800 with that, and we cut them in half. This is what it's gonna look like when we start out, all right? I've already been using this for a while, so what I do is I use a paint stick, okay? It's just like any old paint stick. This is what it start out looking like, and we cut them down to fit the paper, okay? And then we grind the edges off, make them nice and clean. You wanna try to get the nice straightest one you can, okay, to make the paint straight, right? So uh, if you don't have these from the paint store, I get the, you can get really nice ones from uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace, whatever, that are actually better than what these are. These are a little small, but they still work fine. Uh, it takes a little bit of hand coordination to be able to use these because they're kind of thin and kind of small. So you want to kind of have your hand sprayed out, okay? So that you're hitting as much as a, of the stick as you can while it's on the car. Like this, okay? You want to be able to get the car straight, okay? So, uh, we're gonna use we're gonna use a soft block, okay? Get these from the paint store. I don't think they're gonna have these at home, people or Lowe's. Um, this will use these 50-50 ones. It's black on one side, gray on the other. They do make 3M ones that are all black. They want a little bit of a consistency to them. They're a little bit, not super soft, but not super hard either. So they go around corners and so on and so forth, okay? Your favorite dish soap. We use Dawn, keeps my hands supple. Nice and soft, okay? Dawn, that's what I use. Anyway, little shot of this. I'm not, I'm talking like maybe um, for a, uh, the bucket we have here. All right, maybe a cap full a little bit, just a little bit to get a little bit of, of um, you know, what do you call it? Um, lubrication. Lubrication is good. Ask your wife, lubrication. So anyway, we use a cap of this, okay? And we put it in a bucket, so we keep it a little bit of lubricate. Nothing to do with being clean or anything, it just makes it sand a little easier. So this paint job I did last night, so it has not even 24 hours on it yet. And the clear, it's not quite completely dry yet. So I like to get on it before it gets completely dry, so it's a little bit soft when we hit it. Problem with that though, is that it loads up the paper. You see that? I've already worked on the pad on the driver's side, so I kind of wanted to show you where we're at. 
not a big deal. Problem is it goes to a little more paper than you normally want to. However, by cutting out, by doing a pre-cut like this, what I'm gonna do right now, it, it lets it dry a little faster. It gets some of the fumes out of it. You can stick your face up to it when you, after you sand, you'll see what I mean. It, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of solvents are coming out of the paint. So I'll do, I'll do a pre-cut with, with 800. I'll get it probably three quarters of the way down. I'll show you what I mean, where three quarters means. And then I'll finish it with a thousand. Okay, at least getting it flat. And then I'll come back with a soft pad, this dude here, and I'll hit it with 1200, okay? Some people like to go to 1500, 2000, 3000. Waste of freaking time. This is what we're gonna do, okay? And then I'm gonna hit it with compound. I paid money for big money compound. This stuff here, okay, this is a gallon. This is almost 200 bucks. Okay, well you can get a quart version of the same thing. See that extra cut, okay, for about 60 bucks. No big deal. See, a one quart should pretty much do a whole car. And then you're gonna have a final glaze that, uh, not, not a glaze, a final polish. Don't get glaze. If it says glaze on the can for anything you use, don't buy it, okay? All glaze is gonna do is just gonna fill in your scratches. So you're not gonna see it's all done. As soon as the sun hits it, it gets wet, you wash it, all those scratches get, all that glaze comes out of the scratches and it looks all scratchy, okay? Glaze is a filler, it fills in the scratches. Not good, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sand this out. I'm gonna show you how I do it with my technique. Um, uh, I try to get my guys, my, so normally I don't do a lot of color sanding anymore. I have my boys that do it for me. Um, but I wanted to put it on video, so because I'm doing this whole car all the way through. Um, they have come to little different ways of doing things depending on the car we're doing, depends on how we're doing it sometimes. This car is, of course, a classic rest restored car. We want it flat and glassy, baby. Okay. If I'm doing a production car like a Honda, which I don't do a lot of, you know, or um, a van or something like that. Sometimes I'll do it with a DA. I'll hit it with DA uh, 1000 and then I'll cut it down, but that's not my world normally. Normally we're doing this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna show you how we're doing it on this job. Some people wanna do some power tools and you know, there's always a better way of doing something, okay? This is the way I do it. No big deal, okay? So here we are. We have Mr. Fender, flat as can be, okay? All the way down is flat, no roundies. A little bit right here is round. So I'm going to hit this thing, the whole thing, with a stick as much as possible. So when I get up in this area, because this, of course, is a complex area in here, it's going to stop. You don't want to go all the way up in here. It's going to leave a line here when you hit it with your sandpaper. So you want to stop short about in here. Then come back with your pad and, and, and finish it out here with, with the soft pad, okay? So and then probably the corner. I'll, I'll use a stick in a small area like this, my fingers and kind of get the front like this, okay? And then I'll get it pretty close and I will not hit the edges. I'm stopping like right here. Do not go off the edge. As soon as you're going off the edge, you're gonna sand through that dude in no time. I mean, you're gonna go right through it. You have to stop at the edge, stop at the edge. But don't freak yourself out. You have to get at least get out to the edge. Don't stop up here somewhere and leave a whole strip of orange peel and polish the car out, it's gonna look like hell. So you want to get all the way to the edge, and then, and then we'll finish. I'll show you how to finish the edges off. Okay. What else? Like I said, we want to go down about three quarters away with the 800, and then we're going to finish it, getting all the orange peel and imperfections out with the thousand, and then we're going to come back with 1200 on the soft pad, and then we're going to polish it. Okay. Um, what else? That's about it. So. Uh, if I do come across, sometimes we'll come across a fish eye or two. If I come across a fish eye, I'll show you how we're going to address that. Um, hopefully we don't have any fish eyes, but lately we have had some problems with Mr. Compressor and our system, and we are been getting a couple of fish eyes here and there, so we have to fix them. Can't go out with a fish eye. All right, so here we are. Let me get some paper, get all set up, and we'll be right back. All right, here's our paper. Half a sheet. Cut vertically, whatever vertical is, short side. You want to come all the way up to the edge here, okay? This stick, of course, they cut too short, but I'm going to use it anyways. 
I don't like to be all the way out to the ends here. What I'll do is I'll cut them off and then I'll hit it in the grinder on the edge and kind of smooth them off a little nice and get rid of the edges. But this is what we have, so this is what we're gonna roll with. So all the way up to the edge here and try to bend it as tight as possible so you don't have a lot of fluff in your in your paper, okay? Get one of these corners to get stuck up, like this one did. Go like that, and tie it all the way across, all the way across, boom, nice paper, okay? Nice and tight, it's not all full of stuff, okay? You don't wanna have, don't try using a short, you can do whatever you want, okay? But this is how I do it, okay? So here we are, we're, so we're gonna start, we'll start, so when I have fresh paper, I start with the hardest areas, the lower areas. I work myself up, because I don't like bending over. If you like bending over, then you can start from the top and work your way down. I don't care. Normally, I like to start from the bottom and work my up with fresh paper. And then as time goes on, you know, it works up and then we get the top of it done. So here we go. I forgot. Mr. Rad. So, some people like to use a squirt bottle. So we like to use a rag. I like a rag. That's what I've always used. It's what I'm using now. To me, it makes it much simpler than holding a squirt bottle in my hand and having it or hanging off my belt buckle or whatever else. I just squeeze a little bit, ready to go. I got, and I don't have to have a bucket or, or a squirt bottle running around. Of course, if you, have, you, don't have a, you don't need a bucket if you have a squirt bottle, but I like, I like a rag. So let's, let's clear that wall. Nice and wet. You'll notice, okay, straight back and forth, but I turn the paper just a little bit, okay? Not straight, just a little bit like that. Can you see that? So the more you go straight back and forth, the more you're gonna make the car flat back and forth. If you go up and down, okay, why would you want to go up and down? No one looks at cars seems straight like this. They look like this. So try to do, you're not going to, and 45, you can do 45 if you want to. That's the old go-to. But I personally like going almost straight back and forth. Just turn the paper just a little tiny bit. Okay, just like that. All right, just like that. Get to the ends. See how I'm stopping when I get the end here? I'll go way over here like this. You go up here, you're gonna run through. Of course, this chrome goes down here, but most cars don't have that. You do a little circles here at the corner. Get that as much as possible. Now this Cadillac has chrome. It runs from here all the way down, so there's no sense in buffing down the side here. You want to go down to where chrome sits. Move this camera to a better spot. Just like that. So here we go. See what I'm talking about? And you can feel when you're sanding it, when you first start out, it feels all bumpy in your paper. The more you sand it, the more it smooths out. So you gotta feel where you're going with the thing. Some people like to do a little section and dry and look. Do a little section and dry and look. I don't waste my time. I stand on as much as I can and I'll come back and dry it. And deal with the areas that need more, that need more attention. Here we go. Ralphie. I did. Do the 320 right now while I'm on the camera, okay? Oh, two Yeah. What's what now? No, do it dry. Ah, okay. So, and you get back to here, of course, you want to go off the end again, okay? You want to stop here. So, you got to you kind of come up to here like this. And I'll do like the corner, like this. Get in the corner.
All right, let's see where we're at. Squeezy or Bondo Spreader. Personally, I use them all the I use them for squeezies. I like to try to use new ones so it's not all hacked up on the edge, leaving lines of the paint, especially when it's still kind of soft. have a look at it so you can Not see busted. where the shine is at we got to go a little more and the bottom is pretty close okay up here maybe a little bit more okay this is actually maybe a little too far actually for what we want to do with the thousand okay uh, if we can see that in the, in the picture so up here you can see the orange peel that we're going to get to here in a minute see the light how it hits off of that so let me do a little more and kind of get an idea of what's up And I am ambidextrous. I can use both hands. Woo! Here we go. Okay, see that little top there? It's just getting started. Back edge is a bunch of work. So we're gonna keep on the spender. Get it all 800 and 800, and then I'm gonna come back, we start doing 1,000, okay? I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of this by now. All right, so we got the fender about three quarters of the way done. I have yet to do it inside this little area here, okay? This curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper off of here, which is pretty used up, and I'm gonna fold it around here. And I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna curve up the paper or the pad while I'm sanding it and get inside that little channel area or the little curved area. You don't wanna to try to use a stick in there, okay? Cause you just leave lines, all right? And if you got a lot of experience, you can, and I do sometimes. But anyway, I'm just gonna do the jet down here like this, okay? And we're gonna take out the majority of that orange peel here, okay? All right, so you can see also the edges it's a little shiny here, but here a little bit. So I go over and really lightly, okay, like this. Just back and forth a little tiny bit to knock off the, the big part. Because you don't have to hit them very hard, and then that, that orange peel goes away, like right now, okay? Now I went ahead and got the soft pad and did this area inside here already, okay? And it had a little bit of this edge here, and a little more, a little more retention. But other than that, it's thinner is ready for um, 1,000. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do 1,000. I went ahead and made a new stick that almost bugged me. So, um, other thing, if you didn't block your car out, or you didn't sand it, or you couldn't sand it with this without going through anywhere, you're not using a stick, okay? Because you're gonna end up going through someplace. I'm telling you right now, unless your car is super flat, you cannot do this kind of stuff. If you, however, you can use a soft pad, and you can sand it with a soft pad with the same basic, you know, um, idea with 800, 1,000, 1,200 and polish, okay? But you cannot use a stick. The idea of using a stick is, it just takes the top of the orange peel off. It doesn't go all the way down into the other parts of the paint, because the soft pad goes over the, over the orange pad. It leaves a little or orange peel, it leaves a little bit of orange peel. It's, it's just not gonna take it all out like this will. Eventually, it probably will maybe, but this is the way to get it out and make a car super flat like glass. So that's why I use a stick, okay? And, and then, um, anyway, it, it takes imperfections and everything else out of the paint. So, um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit it with a 1000, and uh, then we'll be ready for soft pad 1200, all right? Bye now.
All right, <clears throat> so that's uh, 1,000, probably 90% done. <clears throat> so it's still just been drying to do. So I'm not gonna push it much more than I did. I'm gonna let it dry for a day or two more, and then I'm gonna come back and finish it with a little more, two, little more 1,000, and then 1,200. So I'll see you then. So there it is, I'll paint and polish, you can see. It's nice. Cadillac Eldorado Brits. Done.